From a high enough vantage point, it's possible to appreciate the scale of the artworks on display at the London Art Fair. Running from the 16th to the 20th of January, metal sculptures, clashing colour prints and stylish chandeliers are all taking centre stage this year. Over our history, the fair has evolved to become a much more contemporary affair. So we now have 130 galleries, um, but 15 countries represented from all corners of the globe. They include Canada, Russia, South Korea and Puerto Rico. A dozen galleries, half from Latin America, the other half from Europe, collaborated as part of the dialogue section. Curated by Kiki Mazzuccelli, it's part of the fair's art projects section, which spotlights international artists. At my back, you can see the work of Serge, Sergio's sister, uh, who's an artist who is in, is in his 70s. And on this side is the work of Anna Mazze, who's in her mid-30s. And uh, the idea here is that both artists work with this language of geometric abstraction which is one of the main, kind of, one of the most important trends in, in Brazilian art history. Venezuelan artist Augusto Vialba's work layers paint to create unique textures. It's about materials I've found and put it together and working with colors and transparency and different material. They are basically on paper and I do this process and I finish it on canvas which is, feels like it's leather or kind of different um, point of view, like looking at art. The London Art Fair has kicked off the international art calendar every year since it launched in 1989. But this year, the calibre of work for sale is particularly high, with works by Banksy, David Hockney and Grayson Perry, all up for grabs. 2018 was an especially good year for David Hockney. The English painter's work, titled Pool with Two Figures, sold for $80 million last November, nearly four times the price of anything he sold in the past. Part of what the fair has always been known for is we are very responsive and reactive to what's happening in the market and wanting to be reflective of those trends and peaks. So we have three galleries actually showing David Hockney at the fair. But in addition to high-end work, the London Art Fair is also focused on affordable pieces, with a particular emphasis this year on printmaking. And although items here may be for sale, it doesn't feel like a market. Robert Upstone collaborated with Vigo Gallery to curate a solo exhibition of husband and wife team Emma Biggs and Matthew Collings, who operate as a single artist. Their Isnik style diamond shapes play with ideas of geometry and repetition. People will always be interested in beautiful things that mean something to them and which actually operate on a different level or on a more elevated level than the day-to-day hurly-burly of, of, of political conflict. And many of these things um, are affordable. They're, they're, they're not just a remit of millionaires. They can be afforded by, by ordinary people. The London Art Fair offers the perfect blend of that, from the priceless to the surprisingly affordable with pieces for a seasoned collector and those new to the game. And crucially, turnout's been busy, a promising start to the 2019 artistic calendar. Miranda Atty, TRT World, London. Now to continue this conversation, we're joined by Jean Wainwright in our London studio. Jean is a professor of contemporary art and photography Jean, the museum partner this year is the Towner Art Gallery. What, what can people expect to see from them? Well, it's very interesting. This fair has, as you indeed say, collaborated with the Towner Art Gallery, and they brought this wonderful survey of work. I, I loved seeing it. And three works struck me. The first one, the Eric Revillius. Um, it's a small work. It's, it's a room, and you look at it. It's got 
beautiful wallpaper in it. Now, it's an empty room. And of course, we talk about each image tells a story. And this work was made by Revilius when he went to Le Havre just before the beginning of the war. And he got stuck there for a while due to inclement weather. And he made this portrait of the room, which was later destroyed by a bomb. But why I love it is the wallpaper also relates to the wallpaper that's sitting on in the exhibition, specially commissioned by by the towner, which is done by Becky Beasley. She's picked out some details in this 1939 image to portray on the wall. And then another work that I think really shows us some of the wealth and breadth of the collection is William Gear. And this is an abstract painting. And of course, as I say, every painting tells a story. So this abstract painting with its oranges and blacks shines out of the wall, although it's quite understated. But it caused a little bit of controversy at the time, not because of the subject matter. Well, because William Gear was a curator at the time at the Towner when he acquired the work, his own work, and he kept writing off to muse uh, quite writing off to foundations to ask for kind of funds to acquire abstract art and built up a lovely collection for the Towner, but also acquired quite a few of his own works at the time. And questions began to be asked, but thank goodness that he did do it because we've got these wonderful examples of British 50s and 60s abstraction. Now, Jean, photography plays a central role in this year's art fair, including a special presentation of Photo 50, which has become a feature of the fair, and uh, this year's focus is on family. What can you tell us about the 14 selected photos? Well, again, everybody has a family and, of course, the family album or family pictures is so important to people's lives and increasingly so with, with all the amazing digital photography we've got. But what the curator has done, whose family are we looking at now? He's really looked at different practices of photographers and how they've related to the family. So there are unexpected moments. Firstly, uh, one of the works, Large uh, Portraits of uh, Families by Trish Morrissey, and they're photographed on beaches. And you know on beaches how sometimes people set out their little territories, you know, which, you know, with their beach towels and their windbreaks and their umbrellas. And so what she's done is, that's what it looks like when you first see it see the works and then you think hmm something strange there well what the artist has done she has approached family she had a bag of clothes on her back and she basically dressed up seeing these random families on the beach dressed up so she looked like them either in bikini or frocks or whatever they were kind of wearing and then she approached them and said can I take your photograph with a large format photo for, uh, camera, actually. And uh, they would agree or not usually agreed. And then she said, well, what I want to do is I want to replace the mother in the work. I want to be the mother in the portrait. And so the mother would be removed from the portrait and would be asked to take the photograph. Now, sometimes the father or man in the group would volunteer to take the photograph. She said, no, no, I, I need the mother in it. But it's also about far more than that, about family groups, it's about different beaches in the UK and Australia, different territories, different grouping, social economic groupings of people. So, Jean, now we've touched upon family and also in this year's uh, fair, themes of, uh, you know, national and cultural identity are also prevalent. Why is it important for the fair to represent what we're dealing with in today's, uh, today's world? Well, of course, when you walk round a fair like this, works can't help but jump out at you. You know, suddenly you read works differently because of political situations that are happening, certainly in Britain at, at the point with Brexit. You know, Til Tillmans, for example, that I mentioned earlier, a huge fan of remaining and has done many works about that. So you walk round, you see works that seem to express something of the moment. And this show, which of course has many galleries in it, each of them showing work, international works, works full of colour and expression. That's what art does. It reflects the times and it reflects so many different mediums and so many different types of work 
all together, like a society kind of existing together, which I think is wonderful <laughs> and, and glorious and what art should do. And so these fairs kind of give us a feeling of what's happening now and also work from the past. Right. Great. Thanks for your time, Jean. Really appreciate the insight.